Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 advanced Jenkins interview questions. Now these questions will test your knowledge and expertise in Jenkins CI CD practices. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is what is Jenkins pipeline and how does it differ from the freestyle project? So when we talk about your Jenkins pipeline, we can either create your uh, Jenkins pipeline as a code or we can also make use of your freestyle projects wherein we can create multiple jobs to create a chain of jobs. So your Jenkins pipeline, it is nothing but it's a suit of plugins and these plugins allows us to define our uh, continuous delivery pipelines by making use of your code. So Jenkins pipeline is nothing but writing your um, uh, pipeline in the form of a code. So we make use of your Groovy syntax for that. Now, whereas your freestyle projects, these are nothing but these are your jobs that we configure through the Jenkins UI. So there's no code involved in the uh, uh, freestyle projects. So your uh, Jenkins pipeline, this is defined in a file called Jenkins file. And uh, this provides us with more flexibility, scalability and reusability. So if you're talking about uh, making your uh, uh, pipeline reusable, we can go with your Jenkins pipeline. Whereas your freestyle jobs, they are um, uh, for a particular purpose, right? And it you basically write multiple jobs for that. The next question we have is explain the difference between declarative and scripted pipelines in Jenkins. And when would you choose one over the other? So when we talk about your Jenkins pipeline, we have two types. We have the declarative pipeline and we also have the scripted pipeline. So your declarative pipelines, uh, this provides us with a more structured and simplified syntax for uh, writing the pipeline code. And uh, here the focus is on doing what rather than doing it how, all right? Whereas your scripted pipeline, it provides us more flexibility and control. And this is also written in your Groovy based scripting syntax so declarative pipeline is also written in groovy scripted is also written in groovy your declarative pipelines are recommended for um, simpler workflows and your declarative pipelines are suitable for complex scenarios that requires very extensive customization if you have that kind of requirement you can go with your scripted pipelines the next question we have is what are jenkins shared libraries and how do they enhance the pipeline development now in Jenkins, whenever you want to make your code reusable, we can make use of your Jenkins shared libraries. So uh, these are your reusable Groovy code that can be shared across multiple Jenkins pipelines. So if you have like a common function or you have a common uh, auth that you are using, and if you want to reuse that in your multiple pipelines, we can make use of your shared libraries for that. Now these shared libraries, they mainly promote the reusability of your code maintainability and also consistency of your uh, code by encapsulating common functionality such as your utilities or any helper methods and custom steps. The next question we have is how do you handle secrets and sensitive information in Jenkins pipeline? Now for this Jenkins provides us with a credential plugins that we can use to securely store and manage our secrets. Now the secrets can be anything it can be your passwords it can be your api tokens it can be your ssh keys so anything that you feel is sensitive information we can store them using this credential plugins and then we can start um, injecting these uh, secrets into your uh, pipelines so we can make use of your environment variables or we can make use of the credential bindings to um, uh, pass these secrets into your plugins and that way we can ensure that all the sensitive information is kept confidential and we are not keeping them in a plain text format. The next question we have is explain the concept of Jenkins agents formerly known as slaves and how do you scale Jenkins pipelines using agents. So see Jenkins is um, uh, mainly used when you have a multi-node system when you want to implement a multi-node system we can make use of your Jenkins so Jenkins agents these are nothing but your worker nodes these are your remote machines uh, which are responsible for executing your build tasks as part of your Jenkins pipeline so if you have like you know you want to build on one machine you want to test on one machine you want to deploy on one machine we make use of your uh, remote machines for that. So all these machines, we call it as your uh, Jenkins agent. So we can configure either dynamic agent provisioning or 
we can make use of your cloud based agents like EC2 instances, for example. Uh, we can scale your Jenkins pipeline horizontally, and this will help us to handle the varying demand, the workload demand very efficiently. So instead of putting all the load on one single machine, we can distribute the load across multiple Jenkins agents. The next question we have is what is Jenkins job DSL and how does it, is, how does it simplify the management of Jenkins job? So uh, Jenkins job DSL, DSL it stands for domain specific language. This allows us to define uh, the Jenkins job configurations programmatically using a Groovy based uh, DSL. So basically here uh, we define the code, you, we define the job by making use of a code and the code can be written in your Groovy syntax. Now this uh, simply enables us to uh, basically follow infrastructure as code practices. We can maintain all this code in version control and we can also automate the process of job creation and our maintenance tasks by making use of your Jenkins job DSL that is uh, doing everything via code. The next question we have is how do you implement continuous deployment with Jenkins? Describe the stages involved in a typical CD pipeline. So uh, continuous deployment pipelines can be implemented in Jenkins. So with this, we are basically automating the uh, process of deploying your changes that you're doing to your applications to your environments. It could be your staging, it could be a production, any environments. If you want to uh, deploy your uh, changes to your applications automatically, we make use of your continuous deployment for that. Now, typically, when we talk about your uh, CD pipeline, it involves stages such as building, testing, deploying all of your packages or your artifacts to your uh, staging, getting the approvals and then deploying it to your productions. So generally, when we talk about your CD pipeline, uh, we automate the build process, the test process and also the deploy process. It could be to your staging environment, approval environment and also your production um, environment. Now, each of these stages will consist of one or more steps which are either executed sequentially or in parallel. So when I say sequentially, uh, build the artifacts, then test it and then deploy it or parallelly could be deploying the artifacts in parallel to multiple environments. The next question we have is what are Jenkins Blue, Ocean and Jenkins X? How do they modernize Jenkins CI CD workflow? So uh, Jenkins Blue Ocean is simply a UI extension of your Jenkins that provides more intuitive and visually appealing user interface for creating and visualizing your pipeline. So the Jenkins pipeline, uh, either we can do it in the Jenkins itself or we can have this plugin which is your Jenkins Blue Ocean which simply allows us to visualize the pipelines that we are creating. So it's a very appealing user interface uh, for working with your Jenkins pipeline. Jenkins X on the other hand is an opinionated CI/CD solution for your Kubernetes native application. So if you have uh, Kubernetes applications running then uh, we make use of your Jenkins X for that. Uh, so we can use this for automated pipeline creation, uh, deployment and also your GitOps workflows out of the box. So Jenkins X provides all these features for us. The next question we have is how do you integrate Jenkins with version control systems like Git? Describe the benefits of using, using Jenkins with Git repositories. So Whenever we talk about code, Git and GitHub is what we use. So Jenkins has uh, seamless integrations with uh, Git repositories and we can also automatically trigger the Jenkins jobs uh, whenever there is a code commit or there is a pull request that gets created on the GitHub repos. So for this, we can leverage your uh, GitHub webhooks or any polling mechanisms that are available in Jenkins. Um, Jenkins will simply monitor the changes that are happening to the repository and then automatically initiate the CI/CD workflows. Now this enables for faster feedback loops and also more efficient development life cycle. So whenever we are pushing our changes, we can have GitHub automatically trigger our Jenkins job and then the Jenkins will uh, do the work that we have defined within the Jenkins. That way we are having a faster feedback loop and we are following an efficient deployment cycle. So we can either make use of um, GitHub webhooks that are there 
or any polling mechanisms that we have in Jenkins to automate the integration. The next question I have is what is Jenkins pipeline as code and why is it considered a best practice for defining CI CD pipelines? Now, the best recommendation or a good practice that we have when we talk about your Jenkins pipeline is to write the Jenkins pipeline using code. So this allows us to define and manage our CI CD pipelines by making use of your code. Now this code is simply your groovy code that we would be um, uh, writing and then we can store this um, uh, code in your version control systems as Jenkins file. So Jenkins file is basically where we will be writing our code. Now this approach it simply allows uh, or promotes collaboration among other people in the team. Um, it allows for versioning and automated uh, uh, automation of pipeline configurations and this ensures we have a consistency and repeatability across the different environments. Now, because we have the same, we are using the same code, we will have the same consistency across all the environments. The next question we have is, how do you implement Jenkins pipeline parallelism and matrix builds to improve the build performance? So Jenkins pipelines, this supports a parallel execution of your tasks. Now for this, we can make use of your parallel directive. Now this enables for faster build times. How? By distributing the workload across multiple executor nodes. So basically uh, we will be running the builds in parallel across multiple worker nodes such that the build, you know, this will help us to increase the time taken to uh, perform the build stages. All right. Now matrix builds, it allows you to run combinations of uh, build parameters in parallel further optimizing your build performance for multi-configuration projects. So that's where we can make use of your matrix builds. The next question we have is explain the concept of Jenkins pipeline script approval. How does it ensure pipeline security and prevent unauthorized script execution? Now, whenever there are any scripts that your Jenkins uh, believes to be harmful, uh, you will need to get an approval uh, before we can execute that script. So it's simply a security mechanism and this restricts the execution of certain uh, groovy scripts within our Jenkins pipe pipeline. Uh, now why this is done? This is mainly done to prevent any unauthorized or any potentially harmful code from running within our system. So it's, it's a security mechanism that we have. Now, if you feel that um, the, the script that you're running are not harmful, these scripts will be submitted for approval within the Jenkins and then someone like an admin of your Jenkins will need to review that script and then approve that script before it can be executed. And this will ensure we have a compliance and security policies in place to make sure that we're not running any unauthorized or potentially harmful code um, in our systems. The next question we have is how do you handle pipeline dependencies and artifact management in Jenkins pipeline? So uh, Jenkins pipelines can help us to manage our uh, dependencies and the artifacts. So we can make use of your dependency management tools like Maven, Gradle or Docker. And this will help us for uh, the dependency resolution and uh, uh, publishing of our artifacts. All right. Now, by defining the dependency management and artifact deployment steps within the pipeline, we can ensure we have a consistent and reliable uh, builds across the environment. So basically, the pipeline that we have written, if it has any dependencies, we can define the instructions for those dependencies within the pipeline. That way, when the pipeline is running, we have a consistent and reliable build. So we can make use of your Maven dependency management or Gradle or Docker, which will help us to manage our dependencies. The next question we have is describe the role of Jenkins plugins in extending the Jenkins functionality. How do you manage plugin dependencies and updates? So uh, Jenkins plugin. So Jenkins is all about your plugins. Any uh, features that you want to use in Jenkins, we make use of your plugins for that. So Jenkins plugins, they mainly uh, enhance the overall functionality of your Jenkins. And how does it do? It does so by providing additional features, integrations and extensions. So any features you want to use, we make use of your Jenkins plugins for that. Now we can manage the dependency of your plugins either 
through the Jenkins plugin manager or we can also do it from the CLI. Now this, uh, the UI, the Jenkins manager plugin, this allows us to install, uninstall and also update the plugins all from the Jenkins UI or from the command line interface and that's how we can manage the uh, plugins that we are using for our Jenkins pipeline. So any features or any enhancements or any integrations that you want to do, we can ma we make use of your Jenkins plugin and we can manage them from the Jenkins UI itself. The next question we have is how do you monitor and analyze Jenkins pipeline performance and build metrics? So Jenkins, it provides us with various uh, built-in tools like, for example, pipeline stage view and the blue ocean dashboards. We can use this to monitor our pipeline execution and also visualize the build metric. So, you know, at any point you want to visualize your pipeline execution, we have options, built-in tools available for that. Um, additionally, we can also make use of plugins like Prometheus metrics plugins and Grafana integration plugins. And this will allow us to collect, store and analyze the Jenkins metrics. And we can use this for optimizing our performance and also troubleshooting any issues. And that brings us to the end of uh, 15 advanced uh, Jenkins interview, interview questions. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content and hit the bell icon to get notified of uh, the latest up, uh, uploads. Uh, if you have any sp specific topics that you would like me to cover, please leave it in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.